Hello, it's Julie. Um, it is 3.42 and I'm about to go for my music lesson. And I kind of drove in some traffic here and I'm starting to have the symptoms of a beginning spasm. And I think I'm gonna take off some of this, um, it's cold here in Ohio. And um, I'm getting that, you know, like, feeling around my throat where it's kind of tight. I'm gonna take off my seatbelt. I feel really tired. I've had some, not some good sleep lately and I've got, you know, this overwhelming tired feeling right now and I'm starting to feel a little sick to my stomach. I did just have some lunch and I did eat it kind of fast, but I have never had any pain except this pain. Um, like anytime I've had this pain, it's always turned out to be my esophageal spasms. And so now I'm trying to get my coat off. <sighs> so I notice that I start taking deep breaths and I try to straighten up my posture but I can amp it's in my back, my left side of my back. Um, I'm gonna try to sit my seat back some. Um, I somehow damaged my ulnar cubital tunnel syndrome, the ulnar nerve bundle, which is like where the funny bone is. And that has been bothering me lately. <sighs> so I don't know if um, it, everything else is a little exacerbated so and I've had some um, other medication changes but it's right there where it always is it just gets kind of very tiring to deal with this because here it is in the middle of the day. And I'm having this problem again. And you never know. So here I am on the street. Parked. And I can tell you right now it's like a four. It's kind of going quick, so I'm going to go ahead and get out my medication and take it because I really don't need to suffer. I can just go ahead and make it go away. There's like people walking by on the street and, you know, I don't want to necessarily make a big, big display, a spectacle of myself. but. I can just tell it's it's going worse. Sometimes I can tell and it's gonna like not be really bad. At least I hope that this is one of those ones where it will only take one dose. Sometimes that doesn't work. And it is so exhausting. Like this pain just is so exhausting. So, under the tongue. It burns. But the nice part about this, even though it sucks and burns your tongue, it starts to work pretty quick. So yeah, I can tell it's starting to work. I'll recline my seat a little. I'll go back a little bit more. But it doesn't matter where you are. You could think that everything's okay. You're kind of supposed to like 
let it do its thing and then you can do another dose in 15 minutes. But it's just this huge pressure, right? For me, it's more on like right where the bra is. Ladies, if you wear a wire bra, you know how that holds everything. Um, my bra is not especially tight or anything. Um, so on the left breast, um, the wire toward the middle on the left cup, that's the one where it's like really, I'm feeling the most pain, but it does run all the way up, but it's just this whole chest area, like, like right here, like where my hand is and my throat, I can't stand having like something touch my throat. I never had trouble with like vomiting until maybe I'd had these for maybe 20 years. It's hard to believe that it's been 20 years. It's been over 20 years because my oldest or my middle child will be 22 this June and I had my first spasm when he was a month old. And then they ended up taking out my gallbladder and several visits to the hospital. So the pain is better. Side effect of the nitroglycerin spray is the headache, but let me tell you, this headache is nothing compared to that esophageal spasm. And this this one in particular is up here um, where my clavicle is. So from the chest to the clavicle and my throat, it was in my back today, and I do feel a little nauseous, but that should go away. But living with these is always always a challenge because you never know. Why couldn't this be me winning the lottery instead of having the esophageal spasm lottery? <laughs> I don't know how many people have esophageal spasms. It still hurts, but obviously I'm able to talk and carry on a conversation with myself and you. Does that count? Am I talking to myself? But it is, it's just so, it makes me so tired. It's like, you know, just having your insides squeezed really tight. And even though it wasn't like one of the worst ones, I'm just really tired of them. So I don't know, maybe I'm acting a little bit more vulnerable today. It's probably because they've been more frequent to where I kind of like forgot about them for a while because I hadn't had them in a long time and um, this is like my second one in three or four days. But I am feeling that relief now. I'm feeling tired. I've got about 40 minutes before my lesson, which is supposed to be like my stress reliever activity. I didn't get to practice as much as I wanted to, so that could be adding to my stress level today. And I went out of town, I had to drive like close to 50 minutes on the highway to help my parents get my dad to the doctor and home and 
a couple things. So, be honest, I have aging parents. So, and I must admit, obviously, <laughs> I have some PM, well, I don't know if it's really obvious, but I do have some PMS, so that has not been the case that, you know, during around PMS time that um, I have a higher incident of um, esophageal spasms. I have never noticed that ever before. So... So I really don't think that has anything to do with it, but I will add that on my my calendar that I had an esophageal spasm. Oh, well, I had the two. Everybody has stress. So it's not necessarily any extra stress. I would say that now I'm about a two. My headache is definitely a three. I need one of those little pain charts with the smiley faces and the frown faces and the crying face. So it can, um, maybe quantify the pain better. I've heard with that COPD, they say it's like an elephant sitting on your chest and I can breathe and I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you for the nitroglycerin because it has um, stopped the pain pretty quick. And I know I can take it again if I need it. So I guess this whole episode, about 15 minutes, and I feel like I'm getting better. So I'm grateful that they're not as bad as the first ones that I posted on here. I rarely have them that bad. Those were like 15 on a scale of 10 on the Richter scale. Definitely like having a earthquake and this would just be a tremor today. So if you um, are having unexplained chest pain, any chest pain, Get it checked out before you think it's esophageal spasms. You'd have to go to the doctor anyway to get nitroglycerin, and other people have suggested other remedies. There's one called nutcracker esophageal spasms where you can't even swallow like a drink of water. I don't have that. I can swallow. <sighs> so, just kind of feel like my old saying, a wrung out dish rag. But I am feeling better, so thank you for all the sweet comments that people have made. Um, I just really hope to get the word out there because I know that I've been dealing with these for almost 22 years now. And they just ha happened right out of the blue. And I went to doctors for over five years and... It took that long before um, I was diagnosed. And most doctors still have no clue what this is. Maybe some of them do these days, but from my experience, they still haven't, like if I have to talk to a new doctor, they don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe they've heard of it, but they do not understand like what this is, like what this is like going through this. So, all right, I think I'm gonna be okay. Again, thanks for watching and please make sure if you have that chest pain, you have your heart checked because um, women go undiagnosed with heart problems and then end up having heart attacks and that's really bad obviously. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And thanks again for your comments.